Welcome to Barrett News Channel. Please don't forget to subscribe and follow us in Instagram and Facebook. Russia targeted the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv with a series of missile attacks Sunday, as leaders of the G7 nations gather in Germany for the first day of their annual summit. The chief of Ukraine's National Police Force, Ira Klimko, said one person died and five were wounded in a Russian missile strike that hit a residential apartment block in Kyiv. The injured included a seven-year-old girl, he said. Her mother, a 35-year-old woman named Katerina, was rescued from the rubble and put into an ambulance. She is a citizen of Russia, but had lived in Kyiv for a long time. A CNN team on the ground spoke to the injured girl's grandmother, Natalia Nikitina, who found out about the attack online and rushed to the apartment block, where she cried as she watched teams trying to rescue her daughter-in-law. There is nothing worse than losing loved ones. Why do we deserve this? She said. A huge plume of smoke continued to billow from the building two hours after the strike, while nearly every window was blown out on the top floor and the ground was covered in debris and twisted metal. Ukrainian Air Force spokesman Yuri Ainet said, strategic bombers were used to hit the capital, with four to six missiles launched. He added that on Saturday, Russia had used two 22M3 long-range bombers from the airspace of Belarus for the first time in a Ukrainian airstrike. The mayor of Kyiv, Vitaly Klitschko, said on Telegram there had been several explosions in the city's Shevchenkivsky district, and that search and rescue operations were launched after a fire broke out when a residential building was hit by a rocket. There are people are trapped under the rubble. Some residents have been evacuated, with two victims hospitalized. Rescuers are continuing their work, he said. Speaking to CNN on-site, Klitschko said Russia's war on Ukraine was senseless and thousands of civilians had died, and added, we have to do everything to stop this war. The Ukrainian State Emergency Service said the fire was caused by enemy shelling and was over an area of 300 square meters in a nine-story residential building with partial destruction of the 7th, 9th, and 9th floors. The same neighborhood was hit by a missile strike in early May and was also targeted in March. Vadim Donaisko, an advisor to the Minister of Internal Affairs, said on Ukrainian television that there are a number of military infrastructure facilities located in the Shevchenkivsky district of the Ukrainian capital. This is the reason why the Russians are shelling this district. U.S. President Joe Biden called Sunday's attack more of Russian barbarism. He declined to respond when asked whether the strikes were a deliberate provocation during the G7 summit. After the key city of Severodonsk was confirmed by Ukraine to be completely under Russian occupation on Saturday, the country's eastern Luhansk region is now almost entirely under Russian control. However, Ukrainian forces continue to defend the neighboring city of Lysychansk, which is coming under growing Russian artillery and rocket attacks. On Sunday, the head of the neighboring Donsk region's military administration, Pavlo Karayonko, said Russian forces were gathering for fresh assaults in the region nearly half of which is under Ukrainian control. We are now witnessing the accumulation of manpower, heavy armored vehicles and artillery in the direction of Slavyansk, Karayonko said on Ukrainian television. The enemy is using its well-known tactics, trying to move closer to our line of defense in order to fire artillery at the cities. Enemy artillery is already reaching certain parts of Slavyansk. This is another confirmation that people should evacuate. Throughout the offensive in the east, Russian forces have used intense artillery and rocket bombardment ahead of trying to take ground. They are attacking areas of Donsk from three directions. Karayonko said there had been a missile strike and rocket attacks on Kuriko, a town on the southern front line in Donsk that has been a target of Russian attacks for more than two months. Avdiivka had also been hit by rockets, he said. As Russian forces step up the momentum of their offensive in eastern Ukraine, the city of Kharkiv and surrounding areas have come under increasing artillery fire again. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoyu also visited Russian troops involved in what the Kremlin has called the special military operation in Ukraine, according to the Defense Ministry. Video released by the news agency RIA Novosti shows Shoyu disembarking from a helicopter in an unknown location and meeting officers inside what appears to be a command center. The Telegram channel of the Russian Defense Ministry said Shoyu listened to reports from commanders on the current situation 
and the actions of the Russian armed forces in the main operational areas at command posts. Shoyu is also seen conferring medals on several soldiers, including the Gold Star Medals of the Hero of the Russian Federation and the Order of Courage, according to the Telegram post. It's unclear exactly which locations Shoyu visited and whether they were inside Ukraine. Russia will transfer nuclear-capable Iskander M missile systems to Belarus over the coming months, Russian President Vladimir Putin told Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko at a meeting in St. Petersburg on Saturday. In the next few months, we will transfer to Belarus the Iskander M tactical missile systems, which, as you know, can use both ballistic and cruise missiles, both in conventional and nuclear versions, Putin told Lukashenko, according to the Kremlin. In a transcript of the meeting, Lukashenko expressed to Putin his stress and concerns and over what he alleged are flights by United States and NATO planes training to carry nuclear warheads close to Belarus border. Lukashenko asked Putin to consider a mirrored response to the flights or to convert Russia's Su-35 fighter jets that are currently deployed to Belarus so that they can carry nuclear warheads. Putin replied that although it is possible to match the U.S. flights, there is no need, and suggested that because Belarus military has a large number of Su-25 aircraft that can be converted to nuclear-capable instead. The Iskander-M is a Russian-built short-range ballistic missile system that can carry conventional or nuclear warheads with a maximum range of up to 500 km, 310 miles according to Jane's defense. On Saturday, Ukraine said it had been hit by attacks launched from the Belarusian airspace for the first time. President Biden and British Prime Minister Boris Johnson formally announced Sunday that the G7 countries will ban the import of Russian gold, the country's second-largest export after energy. Biden tweeted on the announcement Sunday in Germany, the United States has imposed unprecedented costs on Putin to deny him the revenue he needs to fund his war against Ukraine. Together, the G7 will announce that we will ban the import of Russian gold, a major export that rakes in tens of billions of dollars for Russia. Biden also remarked on the unity of the G7 and NATO on Ukraine and the Russian invasion, telling German Chancellor Olaf Scholz that the G7 and NATO will stay together and not splinter. 